let's talk about some books. So about five months ago, I posted a book review video and it did really well, which makes me so, so excited because I absolutely love reading. So I'm back with a part two and I'm going to be reviewing 10 very popular young adult books. I'm going to be ranking these books from my least favorite to my most favorite, but I am going to preface all of these books that I read, I actually loved so much. So it was very difficult for me to rank them. So even my like lowest ranking book, I still really, really liked. That's what we are doing today. Let's just hop into the books. All right, so let's start off with book number 10. This was my least favorite out of all the books that I read, but I still actually really liked it. So it is The House on Frip Island by Rachel Kaufman. My best friend actually recommended it to me. So Emily, I'm so sorry, but I, I did like this book and she, my best friend absolutely loved loved it, so you might like it too. It just wasn't my cup of tea. It was kind of like a murder mystery book and I don't typically read those type of books. So let me just read the summary so you know what the book is about. So a taut page turning novel of secrets and strife. When two families, one rich and one not, vacation together off the coast of South Carolina, little do they know that someone won't be returning home. The reason that I kind of rank this as a lower book is because there wasn't really one main character per se like I guess I mean there kind of was but it, it was it was very scattered the other thing was that the main part of the story kind of happened within the last few chapters which made it made it a little bit more difficult to get through but I will say once the main part happened you were kind of like mind blown like you weren't expecting what happened to actually happen. So that was good. It was really nice to end on a very like exciting point. Okay, so for number nine, I have It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vazini. So here is the summary. A humorous account of a New York City teenager's battle with depression and his time spent in a psychiatric hospital. This book was pretty good. The one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this story was the character development of the main character. It was really, really great to see from the beginning of the story, he was just in a really bad mental state and then he slowly got better and better. And it's really great to see his improvement throughout the book. But the beginning was a lot to take in. It was, I, you know, I read a lot of very happy books and this obviously was not that type of book. Um, it was definitely brought light upon a very serious topic, which made it a little bit easier to read, but it was definitely, it was definitely a more sad read, especially in the beginning. All right, so next up for book number eight, I have An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. Having been recently dumped for the 19th time by a girl named Catherine, recent high school graduate and former child prodigy Colin sets off on a road trip with his best friend to try and find some new direction in life while also trying to create a mathematical formula to explain his relationships. This was a very funny book. I really really liked this one it was a very john green book like that's really the only way i can describe it but it was kind of peculiar like the relationship between colin the main character and his best friend was very odd but it was very funny and also the ending was not super typical which is also like a john green book his endings aren't normally predictable and it was the same with this one it wasn't a particularly happy ending but i guess it ended with like kind of a resolution and the reader was left satisfied with the ending Okay, next up coming on number seven is The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by David Levithon and Rachel Cohn. With only 12 days left until Christmas, Lily's favorite time of the year, Dash, Lily's brother Langston, and their closest friends take Manhattan by storm to help Lily recapture the holiday magic of New York City in December. This was actually the second book of the Dash and Lily series. There are three books, I believe, and I actually didn't read the first book at all. I actually watched the show and that provided enough information for me to understand the second book. This book was really cute. I read it around Christmas time, which was really fun because then it felt very festive to read. Also, David Levithon wrote Will Grayson, Will Grayson with John Green, which makes me very happy once I found that out because I loved Will Grayson, Will Grayson. So that's just a little side note there, but I was, I was really excited when I found that out. Only thing that I didn't really love about it was the ending. It was kind of just like, it wasn't like spectacular, nothing really crazy happened. And I don't, I don't know, I wasn't super crazy about the ending, but I guess it leaves room to have a third book. So I'll read the third book and then maybe it will make more sense. All right, next up for number six, we have Paper Towns by John Green. 
One month before graduating from his Central Florida high school, Quentin, Q, Jacobson, basks in the predictable boringness of his life until the beautiful and exciting Margot Roth Spiegelman, Q's neighbor and classmate, takes him on a midnight adventure and then mysteriously disappears. This is really not super my type of book, but I really enjoyed it. The beginning, Loki started off kind of spooky. Like when I was reading it, I was like, I don't know, it was just a little, give me like an eerie feel. But the whole book was like kind of a mystery that the main character Q had to solve. And I thought that that was really fun. And John Green did a brilliant job writing in little hints that led you to Margot. And I thought that was really cool. I've also heard that they made a show out of it. So I'd be curious to watch that to see if that was good. But all right, so for book number five, we have Sun is also a star by Nicola Yoon. So this book summary says, Natasha is a girl who believes in science and facts. Daniel has always been a good son and a good student, but when he sees Natasha, he forgets all that and believes there is something extraordinary in store for both of them. So Nicole Yoon also wrote Everything Everything and I loved that book so much. So I was really, really excited to read this book and she did not disappoint with this book. So um, basically the entire book took place around 24 hours and it was also a two perspective book which I absolutely love. But then the end, it like fast forwarded to like 10 years or five years or something like that. You, you were really, really satisfied with the ending. It was not a typical ending, but it was definitely a good one. And it was also really, really cool because in between um, every few chapters between Daniel and Natasha, Nicola Yoon would throw in a separate little chapter about a character they meet through their adventures of that day. So then you learn a little bit more about each person and the ending just came together so nicely. Like everything just made so much sense. There was definitely the main love story, but then there was also side stories that were really, really fun. So for number four, we have Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. So this one says, Jamie Goldberg, who chokes when speaking to strangers and Maya Roman, who was having the worst Ramadan ever are paired to knock on doors and ask for votes for the local state center Senate candidate. This book was great. It was not a typical love story at all. I feel like the love story was almost a side story to the main point, which was a lot about politics. It covered a lot of really, really important themes such as sexism, religious intolerance, and racism and things like that. The other thing that really stood out to me when reading this book was the character development between the two main characters, especially Jamie. I feel like they just developed his character so beautifully. Like it was really, really cool to see his evolution as a person in the book. Next up for book number three, we have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. 16 year old Hazel, a stage four thyroid cancer patient has accepted her terminal diagnosis until a chance meeting with a boy at cancer support group forces her to re-examine her perspective on love, loss, and life. I understand the hype on this book. I don't know why I'm so late to reading this book. I'm so glad that I eventually did because it is an amazing story. It is so, so great. I actually read, watched the movie before I read the book. That was a really long time ago, so I just decided to read the book now. It was definitely, this one was definitely for a more mature audience, just for like language and mature content and stuff like that, just to like preface, but it was really good. It was definitely not a typical love story, which is John Green's MO, like that is his thing. And also Hazel's interactions with Augustus were so clever and so entertaining to read. I just got so excited between like their, their bickering back and forth. It was just really, really great. All right, so for book number two, this one is tied with book number one because it was absolutely phenomenal. And this one is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The summary is, after witnessing her friend's death at the hands of a police officer, Star Carter's life is complicated when the police and a local drug lord try to intimidate her in an effort to learn what happened the night Khalil died. Yeah, this is definitely tied with number one. In my review, when I wrote it down, I literally said I would give this book a million stars if I could. This is the most amazing book I have literally ever read. And I honestly think that it should be really mandatory to read in all of our schools because it covered so many really, really important topics and it answered so many questions that I would not have been answered normally. Andy Thomas did an amazing job at writing this book. And I, I just think it's so important to read this book so you can really understand what is happening in Star's life and just with racism and police brutality. It is, 
it's truly a work of art. It's really, really good. All right, we are on to book number one. This is my all time favorite book I have literally ever read, like not within just these 10 books, like literally my favorite book ever. It is called This Is Where It Ends by Marie Ninjkamp. Minutes after the principal of Opportunity High School in Al Alabama finishes her speech, welcoming the student body to a new semester, they discover that the auditorium doors will not open and someone starts shooting as four teens, each with a personal reason to fear the shooter, tell the tale from separate perspectives. Literally when I finished this book, I was speechless. Like, this book is absolutely amazing. Like, oh my god. So my best friend recommended it to me and I'm so glad that she did because holy crap, this is literally the best book I've ever read. So basically the book um, has four perspectives but within every once in a while there's just like separate social media dialogue and like blogs and poems and stuff just to help you further understand the story and it is about a school shooting but it takes place within one hour which is literally mind-boggling this book i will say is absolutely terrifying to read especially as a student i'm going to put a huge warning though before you read this book make sure like just just check in with yourself to make sure you're okay with handling this type of topic it covers an extremely sensitive topic it covers many extremely sensitive topics so much there is so much that is covered within this book i read it within like two days and i would it kind of messed with me a little bit when I finished reading this book, so I'm just gonna put a huge, huge warning on this because it covers a lot of very mature topics. Um, so definitely reserve this for more mature audience, but I literally cannot say enough about this book. Like, I, it's so great. It's so great and definitely recommend it. Just make sure that you're okay handling these type of topics. And those are all of the books that I have for you today. I hope that you maybe found a new book within watching this video and comment down below what your just overall all-time favorite book is because I am always looking for more book recommendations. So thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.